What you doing? Oh, getting ready to drill more holes in the boat. But this is really exciting because this is going to vastly improve our quality of life. We will be able to pour liquids into our sink and they will disappear down the drain. Whoa. Yeah. I don't even know what to do with myself. They will just, they will just drain. They'll just go away. Like when you pour things Whoa. into a sink, it'll, it'll sink. It'll do the sink thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, like everything, I have to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you put it? Because the drain happens to be right over top of frame. So I have Can't to make the straight. decision. Do I put it in front of the frame or behind the frame? Or is there a third option? Bollocks. Yep, under the cabin sole. So first step is the access hatch. Garrett will need to cut and make three more hatches like this one before we relaunch so we can monitor the bilge. We'll definitely leak when we splash, as we've been hauled out nearly four months. He's also installing a second through haul for the raw water intake for the engine. We only installed one through haul before we originally launched, which will now serve as our salt water intake for our sinks and washdown pump. Then our final hole in the boat is our transducer for our depth sounder. Because our hull is wood and two inches thick, we had to go with the through hull version. Yes, I'm stuck in the middle with you. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. In the middle of all <laughs> this mess. If anybody wants to have a really, really fun experience in their life, they should try building a boat and living on it at the same time. It's so much fun. <laughs> He's not lying. I mean, <laughs> look at all the space we have. It's so great because every time you need to do a project, you need to take all of your crap and move it to a super inconvenient location, like right in front of your front door, and um, just live in it for, for a while. I think this was a galley at one point, but uh, Garrett's put in two hatches here in the cabin sole because we're installing through holes and the transducer making some backing blocks for the uh, new through holes that are going in the boat. Um, got a three quarter inch and a one inch. So just taking some little off cuts of black locust, planed them down a little bit, and then take my take a hole saw um, with the, uh, not necessary, but since I have one, the little um, drill guide jig thing that I have and a hole saw to get it perfectly straight hole in the middle for the size of the through hole. All right, 
so here we have the uh, one inch through hole. So that's this guy. Alright, so that's that backing block. And then the other backing block goes down here on this guy. Okay, sweet. Backing blocks are done. Holes drilled. Now all that's left to do is cut the through hole to size because the through holes are really long, which I got really long through holes because we have an unusually thick hull. I'll get Ruth on the outside of the boat and to kind of stick the through hole up through the hull and the backing blocks and then I'll make <coughs> a measurement and then cut the through hole and then probably dry fit everything just so we can get some marks down below and where we want the through hole, the orientation of the through hole to be. Then we just have the transducer. The transducer doesn't need a backing block, so that'll be simple. And that should be all of our through hole stuff that we have to do on this haul out. I don't know how Garrett does it. We've got so many projects hanging in the balance right now. We've got the cap rails, we've got the cabin top planking still to do, we've got our ports coming in hopefully soonish, but everything's sanded, we still have to paint it, and let's see, um, the transom or the stern bulwark planking still needs to be sanded, souped, the rest of the bulwark still need to be souped, um, our top sides need to be retouched. Bottom paint needs to be redone. We've got the shaft alley project now and uh, the companionway. I think that's everything that's in progress right now. <laughs> yeah, so we've got a few things going on. I don't know how he keeps it straight in his head. I think he'd say he doesn't. <laughs> but somehow we've got a rough plan and we are getting things done. So today, the main project, main focus, is the through hauls. We're ready to start doing the uh, measuring, cutting, test fitting, and hopefully get them on. And so we're doing two through hauls and our transducer. Ruth is going to take these through holes and go down below and stick them up through the holes that I drilled. And I'm going to put the hold the backing blocks on and measure how much is sticking up and then I'll know where to cut it for the length and then pull them back out. Ruth will clean up the outside of the hull a little bit. We'll dry fit everything with the seacocks on and then just uh, mark the orientation of the through holes down below so we know exactly where when we thread the seacock on it where it'll kind of snug up so our handle is where we want it to be um and then once we mark everything pull it back out seek flex 291 around everything stick it back in tighten it up done, done. <laughs> and then the transducer so this goes this oh, is that on comes the inside off. of the hall that like isn't there at all Oh, it's not there at all. Um, that's only, you'd only use that if, um, it just comes with that. You'd only use that if you stick the through hole through and you don't use a seacock. Um, so the through hole comes oh. through, you use that to cinch up on the inside and then you just screw a ball valve. It's oh, a common okay. misconception. Most people think ball valves are seacocks. But the seacocks but are the ones with the handles. These are seacocks. They thread down over top the through hole fasten them into the hull and versus a ball valve which the through hull um and yes i know this is on upside down yeah. um these aren't going to be used in our application for a ball valve the through hole just goes through and you inside the boat you just have this big threaded stud basically sticking up and then you just screw a ball valve on top of it okay so it doesn't actually which, have a base yeah which works but it's um it's nowhere near as foolproof. With the ball valve, you have this big, you know, 
body of the through hole sticking out basically unprotected and then you just have the ball valve threaded on top of it so if something yeah. heavy hit it the bronze is not that strong so it could shear it off whereas that's why a real seacock is far superior because that threads on to the through hole and goes down against the backing block and then it's bolted or screwed into the hull itself so if something big hits it it's very well supported when we trim it to size then this just gets threaded on it and we're just putting like cecaflex around it and then it's just bolted and that's, so that's the like the connection is mainly important on the outside uh -huh. around this uh -huh. lip and then up a little bit but then we're going to put a backing block between the hull Oh, okay, and yeah, this yeah. seacock, so when I put the backing block on, I'll also splooge you some seacoflex around that, squish that down onto it, a little bit of seacoflex on the bottom of this, that down on top of it, but theoretically what's keeping it watertight is just the sealant around the outside of the through hole. Okay, and then you use a backing block and then this on top of that just for a wider surface and it's not actually screwed into the planking. Here, let me hold it. Ow, my arms are getting tired. It's probably like this. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you have something going through something that could possibly take like, you know, be cranked on or whatever or what have you, the backing block creates a larger surface that, um, so say you didn't have a backing block and you're just going through a plank and this thing got tweaked on, never mind like the structural integrity of this and everything, but like you're just tweaking on one plank. So, you know. Right. But then if you put a big black backing block on it and you're, you're distributing. With this, yeah, you're distributing all the load to like three planks. And then also it gives more of the body of the through hull that's supported and um, makes it strong leader. I made these ones out of off cuts of black locust. So they're nice, nice, strong, really, really rot resistant, really hard. So yeah, it comes out through the hull. That goes on top. Let's do this before the sun goes down. Take these. Port, start. Engine, sink. This is what's underneath the engine for the raw water intake. Pull it out. Let's see if we can get back out. Right. Here's this one. The transducer's further up there. I ever had to get stitches because of a hacksaw. So fun memories? Yep.
all the time we have for this week. So up next, we finish the Seacocks with only a few hiccups. Thanks for watching and see you next week.